All right, guys, we are here at Wild Arrow with the man, the myth, the legend, Jeremiah. This is the new Hoyt RX-1 Redworks, just freshly dipped in first light fusion. And we're gonna get this thing set up today. First first off, though, gotta get a little, gotta get a little bling on there. We're gonna go with the, uh, the uh, orange highlights. Grip, and then we'll do that string stop next. I mean, it just seems right. First light fusion. Orange highlights. The orange, right? It does, it does go well together. It's about the only part I could probably <laughs> do myself at home. So what we're going to do today is we are going to pretty much do the whole setup, but what you guys are going to see is we're going to put uh, the highlights on, which are really easy, like I said. Then we're going to mount the uh, rest, the sight, do a D-loop, and put a peep in there. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. The first step, we're going to adjust the draw like the 28, uh, and what we're going to do is adjust the, the post and the mod on the top cam, and do the, we're gonna do the same thing here on the bottom. When we get down to this bottom post, I'll show you, this is a male and a female end. So there's two, there's a dual post on this new bow, so when you draw this, both of these posts actually contact against this cable right here. And what ends up happening a lot is, when, when you adjust this, when you put this side in, tighten it, you wanna also make sure you guys at home, if you're adjusting your draw length, make sure you take another wrench and, and tighten both sides every time, because. What happens is you tighten one and it loosens the other and then half your, your post falls off. We have a lot of guys oh, wow. coming back in where they've lost one side of their post. And that's new this year, the dual post? The dual post on this new uh, ZT cam. So down here on the bottom, when you, when you take this off, you'll see that there's the female end that pops off. Okay. And the male end's still stuck in here. And we see a lot of guys coming back where one half their post is that off. So what we've been recommending when you adjust these to take both sets of Allen keys and put them in and tighten them together against the cam and then we've been haven't been having them fall off. Cool. And you can put a little bit of Loctite on there for guys that are, you know, riding four of those rangers that kind of gets bumped around. So you can see from the factory they actually have just a little bit on that post there. But once you move it it doesn't seem to hold it quite as tight there. Well the only quads I really use are the ones God gave me, so yeah. <laughs> Quadzilla. Quadzilla. From the factory, this bow shifted a 27 inch draw, and you're 28, so we're, that's where we're just adjusting the draw length here. And so first, we, I just moved the posts, and next we're gonna move the, the module, it's a rotating mod system, and then actually up on the top limb of the bow, it actually gives you a cool chart this year. It tells you oh, what draw length based off of the mod position. So it shipped from the factory at F, which was 27, and now we're gonna take it to H, which is 28. We're gonna use a Torx head here, and this is a T15 size. Uh, a lot of guys go home and try to adjust this and they're using their allen key and actually stripping these out. Oh no. Yeah, so it actually takes a Torx this year. Actually the past couple of years been Torx, but T15's the size to go ahead and adjust the module here. So we're just going to loosen this, back it all the way out. And that mod's going to drop down and it's going to rotate. And there's actually a post. Um, that actually sits back over in here. Mm -hmm. So you can you can see when that post, when you rotate it far enough, will actually engage back up into the cam. Okay. You can see how it's kind of locked in there? Yep. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tighten both those right back down there, so. So that's the module you're adjusting? Yep, that's the top so one. So in order to change your draw length, you have to adjust the posts on both Top and bottom. Correct. And then just the module on the top? Also on the bottom. So oh, so on both sides. It, yep, both sides. We're going to flip it around now. And same thing. So this one's a little bit trickier because there's actually, with this year bow, there's actually a mod on both sides of the cam. And so what they've done, what Hoyt's done on this year is when you draw a bow typically, these bottom cams want to lean left and right. And mm -hmm. so that's why they came out with this, this yoke system here is as you draw, this cable actually takes all the tension and all the load. And so now, because this is separated equally on the string track, this string track cannot lean left or right. It really keeps it really square. So, so there's technically a module on both sides of the cam this year, but it rotates the same way as the top. So same thing, just T15 Torx. You're gonna loosen this. And about two and a half turns on average is about all you have to loosen. You don't actually have to take it completely off. And then once it's loose, same thing, it'll actually rotate. You move that post out, slide the rotate the mod, and then tighten it right back down. So it's usually easier if I lay it flat. Same thing. So we're gonna rotate it, and you can see the post it engages back in the cam, and it's also lettered in the H position. And so then you know, if you make sure your module and your post 
are in the same position, the same position, top and bottom, and then you're good to go. So we're going from an F to an H? Yeah. Yep. So 27 to 28, 28 inches. Yep, added an H for you. And the other cool thing about this year's bow, uh, it has better knock travel. So your older bow, so like your last year's uh, carbon defiant you had, mm -hmm. when you adjust the drill length, it actually affected cam sync quite a bit. You'd have to double check it. But this year's cam, when you adjust that draw length, say a guy wants to come and play around with a half inch shorter, half inch longer, it doesn't have as an effect on the cam synchronization because of how the knock travel is designed. So cool. a guy can play around with it at home without really greatly affecting the tune of his bow yeah. as much. It will still have an effect on your rest once we, we'll do that in the next step. But uh, So if you get home and like, gosh, man, my draw length feels just a little long, you could shorten it down a half an inch without having a great effect on the tuning of your bow. So, Sweet. Yep. Cool. Got that adjusted. So now what we'll do is I always like to kind of make sure the bow is hitting max poundage and then kind of take a quick look at cam sync. Uh, just make sure everything's close before we mount the rest to it. So we're about 72 pounds. Maybe a little over, but if you look, when I pull this down, the top cam is really fast. So what I'm looking at, when I pull this down, I'm looking at the bottom post and this top post to make sure they draw to the, together at the same time. So be careful if guys are at home when they're pulling these down. I'll see guys pull these down and they'll twist their wrist. It actually derails their bow pretty quickly. So when you do this, make sure you pull straight down every time. So come here, I'm going to pull down. And you see that top post is actually contacting the cable a little fast. See that? Yep. So we're going to add a twist to your um, control cable. And what it's going to do by adding a twist here, it's going to slow down this top cam rotation. This is a spinning bit. faster than this cam. Yep. That's your cam synchronization, basically, is where we're at there. And on this particular bow, every bow is different, but these cams don't like to be really fast or heavy on that top cam. They usually like to be kind of barely touching or maybe slightly ahead of the bottom, but not that fast. So okay. we'll throw it back in the press real quick. And... You guys, we're doing Instagram stories. Go follow us on Instagram if you're not already. <laughs> Let's see if they can nail it. Huh? Let's see if they can nail these, this story. A lot of pressure. We are here at Wild Arrow, like we said earlier. We are diving into this bow setup. This is the new RX1 Hoyt, freshly dipped in the Fusion. And uh, we're just checking the cam alignment right now. Cam sync. Cam sync. sync. You're close, but cam sync. <laughs> I think so. I put a half a twist in, so we'll see what we're at here now. So he's watching when these. Yeah posts hit the string if they're hitting together or not. So see that top one's still a hair fast but I'm going to leave it right there because as you start to shoot this bow, your, what they call your split cable, so your main load cable, this piece right here, at full draw, this, so you can kind of squeeze that and have some gift to it. Yep. We're going to put it in the draw board here in a minute. You won't be able to squeeze these. There's so much tension and load so this cable typically stretches first okay. uh, when you start shooting. And so the fact that we're a little over on poundage, I'm fine with, and a little fast on top because as you start to shoot and this bow starts to kind of settle in, yep. when this stretches a little bit, it's going to bring that cam sync absolutely perfect. So the bow will actually slow down just a touch? Yeah, you'll, might, you'll probably lose a pound, maybe a pound and a half, it depends. You know, these factory strings have been pretty good quality, so, you know, once we set a bow and tune it, we have guys come back in after like 500 euros, say, hey, come back, let's do a 500 shot checkup. Very little adjustments, which I like because that way your bow stays in tune and I don't have to work as hard. So yeah. Yeah, works pretty good. Cam sink, cam lean, poundage is looking pretty close. We're gonna throw it back in the vise and we're gonna go ahead and mount that rest on. This year I'm gonna shoot the uh, Hoyt Ultra Rest. I've actually been shooting this rest the last three years and really enjoyed it. It's been uh, super durable and pretty easy to tune. So we're gonna throw this on the bow real quick. One thing I like about the, the Hoyt Ultra Rest, it's actually uh, a quality archery designs rest, but they've kind of teamed up with Hoyt's where this mount bracket is specifically designed to mount to the riser. So with this rest, there's a very critical launcher angle. So when you get to full draw, how that launcher sits in reference to the string actually affects accuracy and tuning quite a bit. And so when a guy buys the Hoyt version, when I, belt, when I mount this to the riser, it automatically aligns itself to the correct position. So and the other neat thing that the Hoyt engineers have done 
is they have this little plastic spacer. That's kind of what I'm pulling out of this little package kit that we have here. So in here it's going to have like an extra launcher, your felt that we're going to add on. This wrench is really critical. It helps with uh, any adjustments you have, but we're going to pull all these little parts out here. And so you got all these little parts and pieces that come with it. This is a this is if you want to mount it to the bow without tying it into the cable. It's a clamp. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these. We've had times in the past where these will actually eat into a guy's cable and break some strands. Yeah. And it's one more thing to come loose. I'm always a big fan of tying it into my cable. Um, so, so we're gonna we usually throw those away a lot of times, especially on this new uh, Redworks. One thing the Hoyt's done that's worked well is with this split system here on their cam. When we put it on, your cable just slides up in between there really easy, and then we do a little bit of serving, and you're good to go. Good to go. Yep. Pull out a little sticker there. It comes with a spare sticker for guys that want that. Well, the guys, it's pretty important to me. Oh yeah, the sticker. So that little piece, you can see, I just popped it in there. It fits right in those grooves. And, and that's so that spacer you're talking this about. This is the spacer. What this does is it shifts the rest back on the riser a little bit. So. Uh, there's a thing that we do that we call torque tuning, mm -hmm. which really does help your bow. You can actually purposely torque your bow. It's a combination of how far your rest sits back and reference to your sight as well, so we can cover that down the road. But we do like using these spacers on these bows. We highly recommend it every time. So this is where that mount bracket we were talking about. So. You can see how it's flush against the back part of the riser. And see when I lift this rest to the, the full draw, that's what we'd call the full draw position. So when you draw back and this cable lifts the rest up, this launcher now, if you look, is pretty well parallel 90 degrees With to the, the string, string there, right? So for guys that are shooting the quad rest, if you don't have the Hoyt version, when it's mounted on your bow, at full draw, if this launcher is leaning too far forward, or in the worst case scenario, it's actually backwards in some kind, I've seen guys come in where the rest is backwards, it has a big effect on the tuning. So now we still have to adjust the center shot and the vertical adjustment on the rest, but at least the launcher angle position is, when you when you buy the white one, that's what you're getting. So Parallel with the string. Correct. Decal on the outside over here, kind of hides your bolt. Just like so. Now, so this is where this wrench that comes in that kit's handy. See how it's kind of cut off and short? Yeah. Sometimes it, you can't get a wrench in between the tech part of the riser of a Hoyt bow and this rest. and so. This little Allen key here works pretty good. It fits in there. Something good to keep in your your pack, but just in that. We're gonna kind of bring this center shot over. And because I've set up so many of these, I kind of know where that sweet spot is as far as the tuning. That's a good starting point. So maybe we'll go a hair left there. You know, I've most manufacturers have a, a recommended starting point for center shot, but it, it's, it is definitely just a guideline. Mm -hmm. um, but usually what we'll do is we'll kind of get that center shot set where we want and then kind of adjust the cam lean based off where it needs to be. But yeah, somewhere right in there has been a, a good starting point with those rests. So we bolted the rest on, we've adjusted kind of center shot. And I, I raised your rest up a little bit where we have a little bit of clearance from the launcher to the bottom part of the shelf there. The reason I like to do that is when I tie on your knocking point, we go to fine tune, it gives me a little bit of adjustment on that rest vertically. If this starts off too low and then I have to move the rest lower, I have to untie the loop and move everything up. So yeah, we just basically set center shot and then the vertical. And the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna swap out this cable and put an orange one in there for you uh, so it matches your bow. And then we'll install the felt and then do the loop next. So this 100 foot of orange. So this will be, this is what we're gonna <laughs> use for your that match, that match is pretty good. Heck yeah. Right. Close enough. If I can find the end of it, or the starting point of it in here, instead of cutting in the middle. Oh, there we go. Sexy. So I'll just pop that off, and then if you look over here, there's gonna be, there's two hole positions, okay? The far outside is where the, the cable goes, and the inside is where this threaded, where it's threaded to lock this in. So the reason why quad does this is once you tie this in, if you need to make micro adjustments on the rest timing, you can actually back this screw out and kind of adjust the cable in there a little bit and then tighten it back in. Cool. So, so you don't have to retie it in here? Yeah, so you don't have to do a whole new cable. With that, we're just going to burn the end a little bit there. And we're just going to 
That's about it right through there. Now this is the typically the hard part is to get it back through this this rubber dampener here. So the nice thing is this cord we're using a little bit thinner, smaller diameter, so hopefully it'll just slide back in there pretty easy. But once you kind of get it started, I just take something kind of sharp, a little smaller, and kind of push that back through. And then Nailed just, it. All right, and then just pull that through a little bit. So we always like to leave a little bit of a gap here. So if we do need to rest, adjust rest timing, mm -hmm. this is that extra cable here is what gives us that room to do that. And then this piece will just come through the back side. Okay, right. Do that one more time. Let's <laughs> <laughs> break the legs. <laughs> Nail it. Good. Damn it. Did you guys draw anything this year? Uh, yeah, I, I joke around and tell everybody I drew a limited entry general season archery deer tag here in Utah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. How's it pretty much is now. Yeah, days, huh? it really is. So many customers I've talked to, they didn't get a deer tag. Oh, like, Holy cow. Yeah. So we're just tightening that back in all the way, all the way till it bottoms out and snugs down. And then sometimes this rubber piece kind of gets a little off, so you just kind of bend it back, make sure everything looks square, functions smooth. So there you go. Sweet. Orange cable. The reason we put this felt on here, it actually comes from when you buy this rest, it comes with it. Uh, but it, it has a felt that lines the launcher as well as this top, top containment bar because when you go to draw a certain amp, their those their ears are incredible. So anytime you just make that draw that much quieter sensor, especially with these rests, because when you lift it up and lock, if you have to stock and move around a little bit, you don't want that arrow clanking making noise. So yeah, this felt's nice, but usually what happens is when we put it on there, that that adhesive over time wears out and wants to it'll fall off. So. When we put the felt on, we actually we actually serve it on there to keep it from peeling off when you're out hunting. So. Tight, burn that, and you're tight on. This is the arrow I'll be shooting this year, the Eastern Injections. Uh, I'm gonna go with a four vein this year. These are uh, some boning wraps and and uh, fletchings. We're just trying out with the Hush Fireball on it. I'll just flaring those out just a little bit. We're gonna take the lighter to it and kind of burn those ends out. These are boning, right? I got to So we're going to tie the uh, D loop in, correct? Yep. I'm going to set that. So I'm just going to start with the top, and there's a couple of different ways to tie this in. I've uh, met a lot of guys through the years. Everyone likes to do something a little bit different. Depends on what professional archer I talk to. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I tell guys, as long as it doesn't come loose, uh, however you want to do it, I'm fine with. But we just do this half hitch knot. So we start with the loop like that. We're going to take the left side down underneath, around, back over the top. And then we're going to go right back through itself like that. We're just going to kind of, I'm not going to set that super tight, but pull it nice and snug. And then next what we're going to do is we're going to take your arrow here. We're going to slide it on the rest. And it's going to give us our starting point for level. So there's a couple different ways to kind of get that level. Uh, you know, we've used these van handles for a long, it's called a van handle level. It's worked really well, but um, a lot of times you can use a T-square. Uh, these oh, T-squares, really? oh yeah, they've been around for years. A lot of you know, old school recurver guys used to use these. So you could use a T-square too to kind of measure and see where the arrow's sitting. And so if you're gonna use a T-square, you take that arrow out. It's gonna come on here. And you clip this on, like so. You just barely want this to slide down to it barely contacts the rest. And then you can see it, how it kind of tells you where your zero is out there. And so when you're measuring this, you're actually uh, measuring off the bottom of the, the arrow shaft there. So, uh, but the levels work pretty good. If a guy doesn't have a level, T-square, something like that works pretty good at home too, yeah. So let's pop that back off real quick. Do you prefer to use the actual arrow that person's gonna shoot? Yeah, because Getting really technical, this is a micro diameter, it's one six six arrow. 
So if we leveled it up with like a standard diameter arrow shaft, it can actually throw that level off a little bit there based off the diameter of the shaft thickness of the knock. And not only that, what's actually really critical too is how your knock fits on the string has a great effect on overall accuracy. So, um, you know, one couple of things you want to kind of look for is a good, you want to feel that kind of that good clip on and then, you know, see how you can rotate the knock. Maybe that's a hair tight. See how it twists that loop just a tiny bit? Yeah. And then, you know, as far as how it slides up and down the string. So, you know, you want, that's actually a pretty good knock fit. There's supposed to be an industry standard as far as the inside knock groove to the center serving diameter. But depending on what arrow guy is shooting, that can change quite a bit. Like, there's some knocks out there from certain companies that are really, really tight. And that has a great effect on tuning. And so, you know, you can kind of check that knock fit. There's kind of another way to really check and see it's not the most scientific way, but literally if you take your bow out of the press, we turn it. If I was to tap your string with say medium tension, I want that arrow to pop off. If I tap it too light and it pops off, that's not good. Or if I really have to hit it really, really hard. So if you turn your bow over, lay it flat, tap that string with what you'd consider medium tension, if that arrow pops off, that's kind good. Of, that's good. That's where you want it to be. So, but yeah, that's a, that's a good knock fit there. So. Yeah, Hoyt on that center sort of does a good job from the factory. So, but what we're doing now, let's just throw that van handle level on. This just kind of gives me a quick indicator of how level the bow is. Um, and, and it's pretty good usually in the vise if we use that. Like if we've double checked it with a carpenter level off the pockets or use some of those Hamsky third axis levels we've used in the past, that level's been pretty accurate for us. So, from there, what you can do is you take this, now what they call the string level. We're going to put it on there. So you can see that's a great starting point, just a little knock high. These rests do typically like a little knock high tune out of them. But if you remember when we first bolted this on, I moved that rest up just a little bit, okay? So when I start tuning this, if I need to move that rest up or down, it gives me a little bit of that, that clearance there if I yeah. need to do that. So um, the next step though, now we got your level pretty close. We kind of got that top loop. I'm going to do what we call a tie-in uh, that sits. We're going to do a tie-in that sits above and below the knock on the string. And so what we do with that, this is a uh, 3D material. It seems to be one of our favorites. Kind of holds a good knot. Plus comes in all the colors you could ever ask for to kind of match your bow. Important. Look good and very important. So we just did two overhand knots. We're just going to take this tight against the string. We're gonna pull this really tight and snug down here. And we're gonna come over and do one on this side. Twice through. Pull that nice and snug. And come back over here and do the same thing. And I can kind of pull that knock out of the way just a hair there. I'm gonna do a third side over here. So now that I've got that knot, I really don't need the loop. And so I'm gonna kind of slide this up out of the way and you can kind of see how it's, it's tied on there. So we're gonna take the lighter, we're gonna burn that, and then we're gonna do one underneath of that as well. So. Cool. so that's pretty good there. We'll rotate this back up, throw your arrow back on. Nice and tight. Really helps have good knock fit and, and reduces the amount of pinch your string loop creates on your arrow. Get one down here. We've had that first one tied in. We're going to take this tag in here. It, see how this, the loop technically comes off the right side of the string? Yep. So I like to tie it onto the left. <clears throat> Again, talk to a lot of professional archers. Everyone. It's kind of funny how they all do their own thing, but done this for a lot of years and it's worked well. So just tie a half hitch back on there. And then if you see, I've kind of got a half hitch. This knot is technically facing left and then this yep. knot's facing right. So I just kind of alternate them. I feel like it kind of helps stop the uh, loop from twisting the string as easy. And then we're just gonna take this and again, just kind of a good medium tension. I don't want to really crank too hard on that. And so now we've got loop level. Um, the next thing we're going to do is tie this in and set rest timing and then we'll, we'll uh, actually start shooting this through paper. So. so with this, there's no exact starting point. 
But this is what I was telling you, it's kind of nice with these new white bread works. They've kind of designed this where you want to take this cable, all you're going to do is just slide it up right in there. And then we're going to take the same thread material that we use on tying in your rest and your, your knocks at here and just do a little bit of serving here just as an insurance to make sure it doesn't slide or move on us. You don't you have to have a ton of it on there, but just enough to feel like it's going to be secure and yeah. pull that nice and snug. And then I always finish, those were half hitch knots, and then at the end I just do one overhand and pull it down nice and snug. And then same thing, burn it off with the lighter. Good to, good to go. My fan over there is really, it's amazing that little <laughs> fan blows that You're flame every out. time, yeah. Or blows it too close to the string, kind of makes you worried, so. Yeah. Have you ever burned the string? Oh yeah. The very first bow I ever worked on, I tied in the peep and went to to burn it with a lighter and frayed the string. Very first one. I'm like, well, <laughs> got, that out, of, got yeah. it out of the way early, right? Yeah. Way. yeah. <laughs> cool. So that looks nice and clean and tight. All orange. That thing's looking. Uh, come together. There's a couple of different ways to set rest timing. Like you can just, you know, you can draw it back and kind of watch when their rest lifts. A lot of people will use what we call a draw board, which we'll throw that in next just to kind of show you. Knowing we were talking earlier about how you can kind of feel like this cable. See how easy this moves? It's yeah. Kind of, we're going to put this in the draw board. You're going to see how much tension and load this cable actually holds on at a full draw there. And this is called a draw board? Yeah. And there's different versions. This one from Last Chance is nice because it fits into the bow press. It really lets you, allows you to kind of micro adjust everything there. So. so this hook just goes around your loop and then this orange cord comes over the string and back on there. It's like a, it's just a safety so if your loop decides to break then this cord catches it and you okay. don't end up dry firing your bow. Is that bad? Uh, no, if you soak it in enough water then it's not a big deal. So I'll just move that out, get a little bit of tension. And so now when we got it on there, got the draw board, we're just gonna slowly crank this button back. This is a great way to really fine tune cam sync as well. A lot of guys will put their bows in a draw board because as you crank that, you can really watch both of those cams exactly how they come together. But I don't like to get it too tight up into this area, so what I do then is I actually just start backing my press out. And you can see when I do that, it's like, it's kind of micro adjusting. Yeah. You can see that cam slowly backing out there, so. So you can see we're getting close to the end of the draw there. Those pegs are about coming around. So, but you see how much slack we have in this cable? Mm -hmm. um, so this is basically your rest timing. So. Really with these rests, as you're drawing, the last probably two inches of your draw, you want that rest to kind of lift. So if it lifts too early or too late, it has an effect on your overall tuning. So with these, you can sometimes put them in these draw boards and actually pull these cables through and adjust your rest timing. But now we were talking about that tension, that load, there's a lot of tension on here now. So go ahead and feel that right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. you can kind of feel that down here. So that cable now at full draw has so much tension and load, it's basically holding everything. And here's one thing that I kind of show guys all the time, like uh, with these higher let off bows, um, one thing you gotta be really careful on when you go to a, any high let off bow is now, see how easy I can push on that string, mm -hmm. okay? So if you hear someone say, hey, I've got too much face pressure whether at full draw, so when you draw back and you get it anchored, you want that string to stop right at the front of your face. If you start, and especially when you're like shooting an animal, you get excited, maybe you push your nose into that string, well, you can see how easy that string can bend. And if you, see if I put that and see how that string now kind of has that bow in yeah. it? That actually has a big effect on your accuracy. So, um, with any high let off bow, face pressure becomes way more critical on your shot. A lower let off bow, say if you go to a 65, like a lot of professional archers will use a 65% let off bow, and they do that kind of for two reasons. Number one, they like more hold weight. You actually aim better with higher with with higher hold weight. But two, it has more tension on the string. So when they're you know sitting on the podium, they're shooting under pressure. If they push their face into that string, 
that string doesn't have an effect as much. And so that's why you'll see a lot of professionals not like a high let off bow for shooting. See how easy that is? The other thing you'll see a lot of guys too is if you're using the old school peeps with the rubber tubing uh -huh. and that rubber tubing's too tight, you'll see guys come to full draw and that you'll see that string bent in like this at full draw because their peeps, their peeps at, it's too tight, that tubing. So for a guy that's using a rubber tubing, you want it barely tight enough to make your peep twist and be straight, but if it's any tighter than that, and, but nowadays with the better quality string materials we have, very few guys are using that peep with tubing now, but uh, but yeah, I really watch that. So the other thing too is I see a lot of guys like kisser buttons. I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of a kisser button, and the reason being, again, is most guys try to push their, their corner of the mouth into that kisser button, and they push too far, or push too hard, and again, it pushes on that string. Interesting. We're gonna take the tension off of this really fast. We're gonna pull that cable. There you go. So now again, you can see yeah. how much. Now, if you, it actually is swapped. If you feel the string, see how tight it is now? The string's now kind of holding tension and load. So now, I'm just gonna pull this cable through there, and then we're gonna crank her back again. Close. So we still need to go a little bit. See how we got yeah. closer, but it's not all the way. It needs to be all the way back. Yeah. And if you look here, this post is barely contacting that upper cable, and you can see these bulletin cables are barely tensioned as yeah. well. So. Yeah, I keep chasing that. So anyway, that's one way to kind of check it and draw board. Check that cam sync. Check that rest timing there. So. That's called the Quickie Plus. Okay. Scott Buckle strap. And one of the, I've shot this release for years. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of a heavy spring. Uh, again, kind of goes back to that back tension and pulling through. So this Quickie Plus allows you to actually interchange the spring in there. So we'll get that set up fit. And then what we're gonna do is have you draw, make sure the draw link looks good. If that looks good, then we're gonna go ahead and cut and insert that arrow. And so we can go paper tune. Sweet. All right, guys, so we've got uh, the rest on. We've got the D-loop on. We've got uh, the fall away. What's the terminology I'm looking for here, Jeremiah? The, the timing. The, the rest timing, timing, the rest timing down. So the next step is to shoot it. This is going to be weird because this is actually a brand new uh, release that Jeremiah recommended this year for us, the Carter. So it's my first time shooting it. So we'll see how I do it. Seventy-two pounds of that. So roll, roll that finger and put a lot of pressure in that trigger, and then pull. Good. Nice. Feel the difference? Definitely did. Yeah. Did you see me trying to punch yep. it? No way. Go. <laughs> so I used to hand guys my release like yeah. that all the time, and they're like, "Dude, your release. Something's wrong with your release." I'm like, "No, the release is fine." They would really do this, and they're like, "It yeah. would not fire." So mentally to get to break that habit of wanting to punch, that's where I love those heavy springs. You'll get that hook on and you'll throw yourself. So you learn how to execute into that release a lot better. Yeah. So we do not so hot. Not so hot. We uh, kind of went knock low. So what we're going to do now with this arrow, just to make sure it's not the arrow. So one thing when you're paper tuning, so this really gets really technical, but you're basically tuning the bow to the arrow, okay? But you also have to make sure your arrows are tuned. So arrows have what they call a dynamic spine, where they all flex and bend a little bit different as they shoot. So the, one of the nice things I love about four fletch is it gives me four positions to tune my arrows. So you'll see this little knock on the side of your, that little niche right there. Yep. It's kind of small, it's hard to see. I always face that out towards me. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock your arrow, and we're gonna rotate to that position now. And we're gonna tune it again, we're gonna shoot it. And you can actually see if your the spine of your arrow shaft changes, like kind of in a golf shaft, you can actually sometimes watch your arrow change tune through paper. So what happens, a lot of guys, they'll get one arrow and tune their bow to that one arrow. Well, guess what? The 11, their other arrows might not shoot identical to yeah. that. So the nice thing I like about four fletch is it gives me four positions to tune that arrow from. And usually on, on one of those four positions, it's gonna find a spot that works. So yeah, so let's try it without touching the bow. We're gonna shoot it again, and well, if it changes our tune, then we know it was a dynamic spine issue with the shaft. So we get set. So you want 80% of the tension on that trigger finger, 
Okay, once you start to feel that, you start getting some good tension, pull that back elbow smooth and steady, just nice and soft. Better. Is it giving you that surprise shot yeah. like every time? That's good. Yep. So, we're knock low still. A little bit better than our first tear. So you would call that knock low? Yep. It's hard to read because you have a four flex, so it tears a lot bigger hole through the paper. So you're saying the knock's coming in down here? Yeah, so the front end of the arrow, I'll grab it here. So the front end of the arrow hit the paper like this, and then the back end, the knock end, shot a little low. Okay. And so there's two things that can affect that. Like, obviously if we're eliminating the arrow, right, we're making sure the arrow's tuned. But if, when we tune it, if it's still constantly knocked low, it could be a level position where we need to adjust that, the, the rest height or the cam sink uh, where your cams are firing there. So okay. I'm gonna add a twist to your, your top left yoke. So we're gonna speed up that top cam just a hair. And then we'll add a twist here, check the level, and then try that again. Cool. Got all these peak bows, man. Started something last year. I think so. I think that one of those is Bridget's, actually. This one here? That's a yeah. good one. That's her new one. So the buckskin's her old one that I got to transfer all those accessories off of that and then onto her new one there, so. You feel, you feel yourself starting to float a little bit? Yeah. So what happens with that is there's two types of shooters, what I call them. Okay, you got what we call a hard and a soft shooter. Most guys are a soft shooter. They sit up, they want to relax, kind of aim. What I'm teaching you to do now is to set up completely different. So when you learn how to set up that stronger weight though, it's going to help you. But I can see those stabilizer muscles are yeah. shaking just a little bit. Yeah. And really weak right now. Well, when you, He's you know, depleted. Yeah, I was going to say, when you lost that much weight. Give me a piece of pizza. <laughs> a, a so much chew it for him. <laughs> much better. Nope. Getting closer. If we keep fighting that knock low, and I don't want to move your rest down anymore, so I'm going to move this up, cut this tie ins, redo it, and then check okay. it in. Getting closer. Keep close. So, again, it's just a here knock left. We can make an adjustment there. Probably uh, what I'm going to do though next step is uh, we're going to bolt your sight and set a peep sight. Every now and then adding a peep sight to the string changes the weight and it can have a little bit of an effect on the okay. pin. So put your sight on, set a peep sight, and then can, like just really fine tune it with everything on the boat. So the next step is we're going to put the, uh, he, he bolted the sight on, which I'm shooting a black bolt cure, is that what it's called? Yep. This year, now what are you doing with the level? Uh, we're just gonna set uh, first and second axis why it's in the vise, so I got a lot of levels going. So Dan Van Handel in the back, this just kind of gives me a good indicator if the bow's nice and level. What we're really looking at is more left and right. So you can see that this bubble and this bubble match up. That's basically just telling me the both points of the actual bow is where I want it to be. The next level is this. This is actually hooked on to your, uh, what they call the first axis. And so I need this bubble in here to match this bubble here. So that's basically telling me that the first axis of the sight is parallel to the bow. And then once this is set here, we're going to double check your second axis, which is the actual bubble in the scope there. So, uh, so with these, just that same wrench we talked about earlier with your white rest, that yeah. actually works perfect. It's the same size there. It's 5 30 second. So we're just going to loosen those a little bit, rotate that first axis, and then just snug that down. Cool. So we kind of got locked out here that uh, BMAX did the same thing when we said is up. The bubble in the scope is actually set perfect for your second axis, and a lot of times that doesn't happen. So uh, this ring right here, when we install, when you install that ring, if that ring is twisted, that's your second axis. Okay. And so black gold is pretty easy to adjust. You just loosen those two screws, pivot the ring to that bubbles in the middle. But where a lot of guys make the mistake when they go to level their side up, what they end up doing is they forget about first axis. They skip this step and go straight to the second axis. So what happens is, say for example, if, if I was to take your first axis and cant it out of, out of angle, but then just twist your second axis back to where this bubble matched here, you're like, oh hey, everything's in line. But what happens on a slider, as you start to slide out, 
your sight actually slides at then at an angle left oh, or right. Yeah, so the so, further you slide, the more it Yeah, off. if you're like, hey, I'm good at 30 and I get to 60 and I'm hitting way left, right? So then you adjust your sight because you're left and then you go back out to 30, 30 and you're now you're opposite, you're, you can't figure it out. So that's, if guys are fighting that, especially at distance, it's usually, one of the first things I would double check is like their first axis on the side, yep. But yeah, now we're leveled up, uh, so that all looks good. And then we're just gonna go ahead and have you draw and mark the string for a peak sight. Good anchor, yeah. Or if we'll keep the nose, so about right there, is that where you see your sight is? Right. A little higher maybe, right there. Right there? Yeah. So this is just an indicator for me to kind of get a good starting point to install your peak. So we're going to start yeah, with a five, or sorry, three sixteenths peep sight. Okay. Um, the two sizes that seem to work best with this is either a five thirty second or three sixteenths. But what happens is the distance from you know your your eye to the peep at full draw, and then the distance from the peep to the scope, and then the scope size will determine what peep sights we need to have. So next time when we draw it back, and it's going to change, we're going to check it inside like this because it's kind of dark back here. But if we step outside where it's really bright, we want to check the peep sight in both lighting conditions to make sure that you still have a good crisp halo around that ring there. Perfect, so that's a great starting position. And so the other thing too on these few strings, hopefully that's the right height, but we'll adjust it if we'll draw it. If the peep starts off rotated a little, what I'd call clockwise, I'm fine with that. Because as you shoot and the string stretches out, this peep is naturally going to rotate counterclockwise a little bit. And so I, I don't mind actually setting my peep initially right out of the gate just a little little off, if as long as it's clockwise, because after I shoot a couple hundred arrows, it's going to twist right back to where I need it to be. Perfect. So put a little bit of downwards nose pressure on that string. Here. Here come down just a hair. That looks like it's perfect. Okay. Go ahead and let down. So the next step we're going to do before we finalize, I'm going to do two things actually. I am going to shorten your loop down just a little bit. So when I'm looking at you a full draw, the draw link's pretty close based off of where the string angle hits. But what's happening is the loop is a little long. And it's a combination of when I'm setting your backhand position here, it's the loop and the release link that determines that, okay? So we'll shorten this down a little bit, but when I'm setting my peep side on it, especially on the slider, um, what you're gonna do this time is when you draw back, and when you get set and anchored, and then I'm gonna actually slide this down while you're out full draw. Because on a slider, when you shoot longer distances, your front of your body has to stay perfectly square and level. What you're technically doing is moving your anchor point up or down the string ever so slightly. So typically what I'll do with mine is I'll draw back, I'll get set, and I'll have a little bit of downwards nose pressure on my string to center my peep on my scope. But then when I slide my scope to shoot longer distances, it, I basically center my peep on my scope at like that 60 to 70 yard mark, right? The reason I do that is 50 yards and under, I feel like I got a, a more margin of error to work with when I'm shooting. 60, 70 yards, it gets a lot more critical. So setting my peep and my scope at those distances helps with my anchor point. Yeah, yeah, so your head moves a little bit. Yeah. It's not bad, but it's pretty good. So let's shorten that loop down. So we've got the sight mounted now. We've got the peep sight on. We've got the peep sight height pretty close. And now we're going to shoot it through paper again because anytime you do anything to the bow, like a peep sight, you can change your uh, tuning of the bow. So we're going to shoot it and see if we're still close. Yeah. Yeah, minor minor adjustment at that point. We're really, really close. So peep side still feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is that last paper tune is good. I'm gonna tie this peep side in place. Okay. That feel good. And then I'll just add uh, another half twist here and I think we'll be pretty much done, man. Yeah, it's looking good. Yep.
Eric, you shot in this video. <laughs> <laughs> drag and drop, drag and drop. Well, if you guys are still watching, uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. This is a very long video, but this is a very in-depth video about how to set up a bow with a lot of things. And I've been shooting a bow since I was 12 years old, so it's 32 years or longer, but not 32 years. I, I'm not good at math. Anyway, some of the things Jeremiah has told, us, told me today or showed us today are things I've never heard, never thought about, but... When he says them, it's like, wow, I've never, I can't believe I've never thought about that. It's just, I mean, for me, setting, having somebody that knows all the ins and outs of bows, like Jeremiah and the Wild Arrow crew, is so important. Because if you don't have 100% confidence in the guy setting up your bow, or you don't have 100% confidence in yourself setting up your bow, I just feel like it's really hard to have self-confidence in yourself and your abilities. So it's important to go through all these steps to know that you're starting with something that's shooting proper and shooting the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, it sounds like a few of you guys who have watched have actually traveled all the way to Utah yeah. to have Jeremiah and his team work on your bow or even maybe buy a new bow here. Yeah, right? we've had that. We've had guys ship us some bows to have some work done on them, which has been pretty cool. And then, uh, but we get phone calls all over the country now, guys calling, asking some technical questions. And, you know, we do the best we can to answer them over the phone. But, you know, one, one thing that I tell guys really that, like, I can tune a bow to my hand, but tuning a bow to you, that's where we really specialize in. So, you know, anybody that usually buys a bow from us, this is the process that we try to go through to ensure that whoever buys a bow leaves the door, man, they're dialed in. So, that's cool. All right, guys, this is uh, my last arrow. I stepped back a little further, about eight eight yards. Uh, Jeremiah says a little further out, and you paper tune, you can fine tune a little more. If you see that, that's about perfect, right? That's really good. So until you put a couple hundred arrows through that bow and stretch the strings, I'd call that good for now. Cool. I usually tell guys, you know, two, yeah, 200 arrows come back. We can double check everything. But at this point, the uh, only thing we got to do is throw your orange dampeners in. We're going to cut and burn this cable. Uh, and so it doesn't adjust to rest timing and then rather than that you just got to put some time behind it so. Cool. We just want to tell uh, Jeremiah. Thanks, man He's always helping us out hooking us up and like I said, we're 100% confident when we leave the shop that our bows are set up properly But uh, thanks for watching guys Cool. Yeah, close up selfie time selfie time <laughs> Crushed it. Sessive time